George Wishart was now dead, but the story was not over. Shortly after his death, some of his friends gained entry to the castle and took Cardinal Beaton captive. They put him as a prisoner here in the Sea Tower, the same place where John Knox commented that many of God's children had been imprisoned for their faith. Some of Cardinal Beaton's friends then tried to dig a tunnel under the wall, which can be seen to this day, but they were unsuccessful. Cardinal Beaton was then killed and hung out the window of this tower while they had the first Protestant church service in Scotland here in St. Andrew's Castle. Not everything the reformers did in the past is to be imitated or was right. Ultimately, we have to look to Jesus as our example in all things. John Knox would later join these believers and was here in the castle when he was captured by the French Navy. Along with some others, he was sentenced to work as a galley slave and did this for 19 months. Then he was released. No one really knows why, because it was not normal custom to release a galley slave, but providence must have been in his favour. He returned to Scotland, but soon after he went to England, where he spent some time with Thomas Cramner, Archbishop of Canterbury, and then he also went to Berwick-upon-Tweed, where he preached and ministered there. Soon after Mary, a staunch Catholic, came to the throne in 1553, he left Britain and went to Europe, where he settled for several years in Switzerland. He spent time with John Calvin, and this powerful reformer, Calvin, would have a huge impact on his life, on his theology, and on the reforms that he would later lead here in the country of Scotland. In 1559, he returned here to Scotland, this time for good, and took over as the minister here in St. Giles Cathedral, becoming its first Protestant minister. Whilst here, they abolished the mass and repudiated papal jurisdiction. As well as preaching, he was also instrumental in writing some important documents that helped to frame the church. He, along with five other men, incidentally all named John, wrote the Scots Confession of Faith which explained what the church believes, and the Book of Common Order, which replaced the prayer book and was officially adopted by the church in 1560. Despite the fact that he traveled extensively throughout his life to different parts of Britain and Europe, he always maintained a deep passion for Scotland, famously saying once, give me Scotland or I die. He always kept in his mind his home country, a place that had been laid upon his heart. I remember once as a young minister being told, your calling is where your burden lies. Maybe today you find yourself in a place, a town or a country that's not the exact place that the Lord has called you to minister. Stay faithful to him, work where you are and pray that the Lord would open doors to minister where your burden truly lies. For John Knox, that was Scotland, his homeland. For you, it may not be your hometown or your home country, but it may be a far off foreign mission land. Wherever it is, be faithful to God and follow as he leads. <laughs>